Hello and welcome to Morning Coffee with Mad Dog Merv. Today we have a beautiful day. Summer finally showed up this week and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on on the channel. Let's get started. Some morning coffee Mad Dog Merv today. We've got our French roast this morning Bagel. again. I wonder if I'm, I'm a big fat guy. I mean, then they cow. I always had a schmear, a schmear, a schmear, a schmear. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. Uh, I have no clue. And I got a bunch of chores to do. Oh, who wants to do that? Today's shout out goes to the Rocky Mountain Hobby Expo. This is a new show that has been started by some of my friends in the IPMS group. And it's a, what do they call it? An open, um, an open format uh, judging system. <clears throat> so it's not the uh, not the typical compete against everybody else, and you know don't have a hope of winning because you know Joe uh, has has entered the contest and you know he, he always wins everything. So no, this is a this is a completely different format, and it's geared more around helping you to become a better modeler by um, taking your items and having the judges who are experts in a certain field uh, judge your, uh, your your build according to a certain you know certain standards and <clears throat> you get so many points and whatnot and they leave feedback as far as well so here's what we saw that you know could be improved you know that that kind of thing so I'm very anxious to see how this uh, how this show goes they got lots of vendors and that weekend also, uh, that's in two weeks, two weeks, uh, two weeks from yesterday, um, they're going to be doing this out at the uh, National Guard base in uh, West Jordan, Utah, Air airport number two, we call it. But there's a <clears throat> National Guard base with uh, Blackhawks and uh, Apaches, and uh, supposedly we'll get a bit of a tour of the place, which will be really neat. Anyway, um, <clears throat> It's going to be held there uh, Saturday the 22nd, and admission is free to just get in and look around. If you want to enter, I can't remember what the cost is, but it's a minimal cost uh, for unlimited amount of models that you want to take. So anyway, uh, shout out to them. Check, check this out. Check out the information on Facebook, and we'll see you there. Well, I hope everybody liked that uh, first installment of graveyard model cars. Now, you, you know, if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that I have done some other brought back from the dead type of things with tanks, um, with some cars. Um, but I thought, I thought I would start an actual series dedicated just to this. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't, you know, don't do that. Uh, around here, I'm kind of the only crazy that brings stuff back. Most of the guys around here want a kit that's completely unstarted, and you know, I'm, that's fine. Uh, I build a lot of those too. But I find, of course, being a tightwad, being on a budget, I find that I can uh, get sometimes built kits or already started kits for either next to nothing or nothing and we've shown you some of those before because someone started an engine or something to that effect or maybe they've put the wheels together the value of the kits just dropped to almost nothing so you know yay for me and sometimes like with this javelin uh, I mean there was a 67 Cougar there's been a few other things that I've had that were actually really rare kits that you know, our, our $150, $200 kits sometimes, if you get them on eBay, um, if you can find them, that uh, there's just not a great choice. This Javelin was one that I'd gotten from a friend when he moved. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff I'd traded him, and it was really nice to be able to uh, bring it back because I've got a display, 4th of July display. I've got a Chevy, I've got a Ford, I've got a, a Dodge. And I really wanted something from AMC to put in there as well. And when I saw this, I thought this is going to be great, except for it didn't have a hood. Uh, so I'm going to have to do something there. Couldn't find one on eBay to save my life. 
So, okay, well, uh, I got to build something. And then it, in the meantime, let's redo the tires and rim combination. Let's, uh, let's refresh the paint, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so there it was. We'll have more installments on different, uh, different ones uh, from time to time. And that one you'll see again in the 4th of July um, display that I'm doing uh, here in a few weeks. In fact, uh, I think it's next week is uh, there's a model uh, contest little show uh, out at MRS. They do their monthly <clears throat> uh, model contest and appreciation day. And this month it's cars. So ah, I'm being attacked. I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the Fourth of July display, which got this AMX in it. So um, yeah, we'll get some pictures for you. It looks like that kit hoarder stash was a was a hit with you guys. Uh, that '67 Chevelle, uh, it's got a lot of neat parts in it, and I I got to be honest, um, it's not going to wind up with that 396 in it. That 396, that's a good looking motor, is actually going to go into uh, a Nova that I'm doing for a friend of mine uh, who just recently purchased a 396 for his Nova. So, um, but there's a lot of good parts. Uh, a lot of neat options it'll probably be a while before i get around to building it but we will see because you just never know with me what whatever mood hits but this week uh, we will be doing something on the kit hoarder stash i'm just not 100 percent sure what because i've got a few things that uh, that we could look at so uh, we'll we'll keep you posted on that so for the main show um tomorrow uh I think I'm going to go ahead and put up this uh, piece that I did on uh, one of the schools. Remember, they closed four schools uh, just recently, just last week. Um, <clears throat> and I think we've covered three of them, if I recall. So we need to cover that fourth one. And if I decide against that one, we'll do something else because there's another um, <clears throat> there's another school that's kind of come to light. Uh, it's history recently. And I was going through some pictures, uh, somebody on a Facebook page that I have called Old School Buildings of Salt Lake actually shared some new information, some new pictures from uh, a relative of theirs that I haven't seen before. So awesome. Uh, I always like these old historical 100, and, you know, 100, 150 year old pictures that um, have not seen the light of day. You know that the public hasn't seen, uh, so it's it's kind of exciting for me to be able to to bring those out to you guys. So, uh, regardless, we are going to do an echoes from the chalkboard tomorrow. So a quick rundown, a quick rundown of uh, what's been going on. So number one, first, I'm going to show you guys. Um, you see this planter here? Where's that planter? Oh, it's right there. Okay, and there's another one right there. So what these planters are is I have, uh, remember those those tiki torches that I was talking about that got skulls on them? That, anyway, it's that time of year when I need tiki torches out here with citronella because we get mosquitoes and I don't like mosquitoes. So once I fixed my tiki torches and I went to put them in the ground, even though it's wet, the ground's pretty wet. I put it in the way that they won't go in. I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? So I need like a holder or something. And I was trying to come up with an idea. And then it dawned on me if I take these five gallon buckets, paint them in kind of a, a stone, you know, effect uh, paint, uh, buy some really pretty flowers, and then put like a, a tube down the, the center of it, um, I'll have a great holder for the tiki torch. And voila. <clears throat> now, I think with, with everything I spent, it was about $40. Uh, but I bought way more flowers than I than I needed to. Uh, let's take a look. See, I've got I've got some extra flowers. I've got to find a another pot for them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I you know I love color and I love all these you know pretty flowers and I just thought it would be a really neat holder for the tiki torches so i was busy doing that that took 
that took one afternoon. Uh, the AMX, I went ahead and started putting some stars. I got my stars. I found my stars. Started putting those on the on the blue field. And I changed out the tire to wheel combination. Because what was on there was, was rubbing. And I wanted something more realistic. So you'll see how that turns out here in a week or so. Uh, when I show that one again. Uh, what else was there that I... Okay. I got... A bunch of Mustangs. So the Mustang from that group of of uh, cars that I got from eBay just recently. There was a GT500 that was blue and it was awful. And I thought this is going to be a great challenge to try and bring this back. But what exactly do I do with it? So I uh, stripped it down. Uh, this week I decided on a paint color and painted it now. You know me, it's not going to be just the same red that everybody else would do. It's uh, it's one of the rare, extremely rare colors for a Shelby. So I'll leave that one with you. Then uh, I had to get a couple of parts for it because, yeah, there were a couple of parts that were just too far gone. And I could rob my parts box, but then I need to replenish or I, parts box, but... I've got other unbuilt kits, let's put it that way. And I could rob from them, but then I need to replenish that. So I uh, got on eBay, found a few extra parts, and I've got those on their way. Okay, so there's that one. There's two other rare colors that, uh, that were on Shelby's that I painted this week. There is, <laughs> I, I got some more already built 65 convertible Mustangs and so I put those up on the bench along with the couple that I already had and I've decided okay I need to get these finished up and again these are ones all of all of them there's like five of them they were some that I got off of uh, eBay that were that were built from from different people and they need a bit of a refresh they're not horrible they just need a bit of a refresh and they need to be done right in some cases so uh, they are on the bench currently like I said I got like seven projects right now on the bench that I'm working on so unfortunately I don't have anything completed to do a show right now uh, because I'm trying to you know do all of these different things but uh, I think there's going to be a couple of really neat shows coming up soon with those Mustangs if you like Mustangs, if you like rare Mustangs, if you like rare color on Mustangs, and if you like rebuilds, you'll definitely like uh, those shows when they come up. So anyway, it got really hot here, uh, which is great. Summer arrived this week. Uh, you know, we were in the mid 70s um, for highs during the first part of the week. And then all of a sudden, wham, it hit and we're up in the 90s. Okay, it's summer's here. You know, it is summertime. So, you know, good good for us, uh, which makes the mornings here you know, beautiful and nice. There's, It's it's a little warm even right now. But uh, in the afternoon, it is unbearable in the doghouse. Uh, I need to get my, I've got my cooler running, the fan running, but I do need to get the uh, the water hooked up to it. So I'm going to head off and get that done. Get working on these projects, and we will see you tomorrow for an old school building of Salt Lake. Thanks for joining us, folks.